Hey, I'm back with another Tesla update video and today is 2022.36.5 and wow, this is a pretty impressive update. Hey there, welcome to the video. So as mentioned, there are some great updates today. I'm gonna to leave my favorite until last. So let's jump into what's new. So this first update is for autopilot. Now you may have had this before, when you're in a merging lane, maybe the lane you're going into is, is heading into another one and merging, what would happen is autopilot would kind of freak out and either suddenly divert to another lane or just kind of steer left and right as it didn't know what to do. What will happen now, it's not actually gonna change lanes for you, but it will disengage autopilot and send you an audible alert as well so you know that autopilot has disengaged. Next up is cabin overheat protection. Now before there were no settings you could change to adjust the actual temperature. Now on the screen you get to adjust between 30, 35 and 40 degrees. How many times have you turned up to a supercharger and it's been super busy? For me, it never used to happen, but it's getting more and more common. So Tesla have updated the maps now to show you peak times and show you when it's likely to be more busy. Now you could always see the amount of free stalls on the map, but this new addition will help you choose maybe a better supercharger to use if you wanna ensure that it's not gonna be busy when you get there. Now, all you need to do to see this is tap the charging icon here on the map and instead of tapping one of the superchargers, which will start a navigation to that charger, simply tap the one you're interested in going to. And then you'll see this new map details here. So you can see here, it's saying the busy times um, on the map throughout the day with a black bar of where we're at right now and how busy it will be. Interestingly, there are now new charges for peak and off peak times. So it's actually gonna become cheaper or more expensive to charge at certain times with your Tesla at certain superchargers. We have some Tesla app improvements and you can now view additional media player details and the ETA to a destination within the app. But there is another feature as well. We now have the ability to unlatch the door from the app itself. So if you've ever been stuck in winter time trying to bash off the ice from your Tesla Model 3 door, you know how hard it is sometimes in winter to get in. So what will happen on the app, you can unlatch the door and it should pop the door open. So perfect for those winter days when you can't unlatch the handle. Also, car left open notifications. So if you leave the car door open or unlocked, the Tesla app will now let you know about it. Okay, so let's jump to my favorite update by far, and it's the brand new energy graph. So if you don't have it down here on your dock, you can tap these three buttons here and then add it in. I always have it in the dock because I like to see how much energy I'm using. But before, it didn't give us a great amount of detail. It didn't really tell us where we could save energy and make our Tesla Model 3 more efficient. So now Tesla have brought that to us. So we essentially have this brand new screen here. I've put in directions to Bent's Garden Center and we'll do a little drive so I can show you how it works. But essentially we now have a drive energy page and uh, you can see here it's going to give us consumption details on driving, on climate, battery conditioning, uh, elevation, and then everything else as well. You've got the rated button here, which will um, give you range tips. So if you're a particular driver who likes to put your foot down, you're going to get tips here about driving too fast or too slow. I'll show you in a minute. You've got your current drive, uh, sorry, your rated, your current drive, you can see since last charge. You can look at your trip, you can see in park, things that are consuming your energy, and then your consumption overall. And this is the old graph that we used to have. But anyway, let's go on to Bents and I'll show you how this works. Now I've got this on live prediction. So this should change as we do our drive. So you can see already my prediction has gone up, but we're now gonna get onto a dual carriageway and we can uh, see if we can change some things which will give us some more tips. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the air conditioning on, I'm gonna turn the fan up to three, uh, I'm gonna turn the temperature right up as well. Let's roast away. And then I'm gonna do things like accelerate a bit quicker from, from the lights. So you can see already here, it's saying range tips, aggressive acceleration consumes more energy. Use chill mode to improve efficiency. You can see already it's giving us the details of what is using our entire consumption. Obviously driving is usually gonna to be top, but you can see climate already. This was debated in some of the forums whether the climate control would really make much difference. 
I've only been driving for two minutes, but it has made a 1% difference change. So let's go. If these lights are green, I'm just gonna put my foot down a little bit. We are going uphill as well. So we can see there, the live prediction is in orange, which means we're doing a terrible job or a bad job. Now it's worth noting in the previous update, Tesla has also added the ability to choose from different routes. So you may find a route which is more energy efficient than you could before. So I've arrived at the destination. I actually came into the city instead of going to the garden center. And it's really interesting how this trip graph works. I really like it because it gives us more information about our own Tesla so we can make it more energy efficient, especially with the price of charging going through the roof. So if you look here, you can see we've got range tips. The brake pedal used an extra 0.1%, used regenerative braking where appropriate to improve efficiency. And then if we go to rated, you can see that going uphill cost 0.7% and going downhill saved 0.6%. So it kind of evens itself out. So it's really interesting to see. On the trip, we can also see that driving used 1.7% of all of the consumption. Climate was only 0.2%, so it actually used a little bit less than I thought. Uh, battery conditioning was zero, elevation 0.1, and then everything else was 0.3%, which I think is probably things like the radio. I had that blaring out uh, on most of the journey. There we go. So they are the new updates for the Tesla Model 3. Let me know what you think about them in the comments section below. And remember to check out the other Tesla videos up here. I'll see you in the next one.